Welcome to Podcast Air Toten. My name's Rad. I'm Matt. I'm Tech. Today we're just doing a little, a little casual podcast. We thought there was a some uh, some teasers for the next game, but it's you know debatable. So mostly just gonna talk about kind of what got us into zombies. You know uh, what we'd like to see going forward. You know some of our favorite moments and such, and then at the end we'll kind of go into uh, some of the stuff about the teasers. So. I guess uh, I'll cue the casual jazz music here. Mm. Okay, so uh, I guess so. Let's just start off with a simple question. Well, not so simple, but what is it about zombies that makes it special to you? Let's go first. Wow. Uh, I guess I'll take it. The thing that stands out about zombies for me was. The way that it made me really uh, become acquainted with, you know, I don't know, everyone uses this phrase like in college, professors do, and I don't know, people kind of talk about it like it's whatever, but like critical thinking, you know, where like you just, you try to make logical statements that flow from one another and, you know, be able to critique them and all that. So that was what was really fun about, you know, going through the story was there was just like a no, what no consequences way to have a really fun, you know, logical debates about just like what is and isn't possible based on evidence in front of you um and so that's what i that's what i really enjoyed it for was it gave my adolescent brain a a good teaching in uh in critical thinking and just making trying to make logical statements and all that so that's that's what it is for me i i agree i think there would be a point that you know, despite people thinking, oh, it's Call of Duty, like a mindless shooter. Like, in a lot of ways, right. it kind of has been, like, an educational tool. <laughs> like, if yeah. you really dig through the, the story and everything. And that's not to mention, right, just, like, the literal content of the story being, you know, at least in the originally just being so historically and, you know, just a lot of historical and some sci-fi based. But you just, there was a lot of fun Googling and researching and communicating with others about ideas that you would do that I think was just so beneficial and it was it was so much fun yeah no, I, I definitely agree I mean for me I think it's sort of the the story behind it like I've always been someone where even if it's I'm sort of interested in something like I just always have to like look up it's Wikipedia or look up like oh what's it about and when I started to learn about zombies because I've always liked history mythology all that type of stuff when I found um you know, the story behind it, there was actually, obviously, it's, a lot of it's fabricated, but basis in, like, history and conspiracy, like, it was neat that, um, you know, there was an element of it, like, that, like, could have been real. Obviously not the zombies yeah. part, but, like, it was just, it kind of felt like, oh, you know, this isn't just something that's completely fabricated, and the fact that there's a, a basis in, some basis in reality, I think was really fun. And I've just, you know, whether it's ether chaos, just kind of like trying to dial it back to like, what's its real life inspiration has been really fun for me. Um, and I think that's why it'll always sort of be special because it's kind of like, it entertains that, well, it almost could be real when it's yeah. not obviously, but yeah. What about you, Red? Uh, I didn't know I was going to have to answer questions. Um, <laughs> uh Oh, you don't get away with only asking. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, yeah, it started for me with like the tying it into history because I started getting to the story around when I started getting into history and stuff. Um, so finding that real life connection to real real historical events was really interesting to me it, to start off with. And I mean, obviously, the game itself—it's a fantastic game just to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can still—I still go back and play. But um, yeah. I think the thing that's always sort of stuck to me, stuck out to me, was like when I try to play. Like uh, other zombie modes, by like Sledgehammer or by Infinity Ward, right? It's it's same core gameplay. It's it seems like the formula should work, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it comes down to the writing and the characters that really make like Treyarch zombies stick out. Yeah, yeah. Like I, it, it's it's I, they're I, so I, they're so funny. They're so witty. All the lines that are said like in game, all the radios. It just it's all just so expertly written. Mm -hmm. Even if it's if it's wacky and it it doesn't quite always make sense, you still just love it. It's so endearing. Yeah. So like that's even... where I think you think it comes down to like nostalgia. Like I can, I almost wonder if if 
a Call of Duty Zombies franchise that isn't Treyarch just simply can't make it because of the idea that it's not Treyarch. That's I, I, yeah. I think there's the truth. Fact. I think no. I think there is truth behind that. Um, and I will say, you know, while there obviously is like an element of nostalgia, I, I do think there, a large component of it is just sort of the way Treyarch develops the characters. And while mm. I like the the transit characters, I mean, I feel like maybe there was a little bit of a hiccup, but like it feels like. Even after, you know, Ultimus and Primus, like all the one-off crews and stuff like that, still found a way to be entertaining and interesting in their own right. And I don't know, there's just something more about, maybe it's because they were only intended for one map, but it feels like the Treyarch characters have more staying power. And I think uh, that makes the maps more enjoyable. Um, but it would be interesting to hear from someone maybe who, like, doesn't, isn't super involved in the story. Because you know what I mean? Because like I'm, you know, I'm listening to the characters and what they're saying. But if it's like maybe from it, maybe there is a lot of. I mean, there probably is a lot of gameplay stuff too. Okay. But but that's immediately where sort of I go. Um, right, right. Yeah. I mean, and gameplay definitely too. Um, just like the way the maps are designed, both aesthetically mm. and gameplay wise, they have great flow for the most part. There's obviously you know, they haven't always been heavy hitters. Let's be real. But I mean, <laughs> I mean it's honestly, also what, like. 30 maps now. <laughs> right. I mean, you got you had to mess up sometime, but yeah, aesthetically and it, and they always tie really well into the the story as well. But even just you don't even have to really follow the story to get what's going on in a map. Um, and I think that's mm-hmm. kind of the idea. You can tell that Moon is like this, you know, Nazi science base. You can tell some some horrible shit's going on here. It's it's all interesting. Yeah. Kind of even just sort of thinking about the general aesthetic. I mean, maybe before I shoot myself in the foot. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from, like, I know in other areas of media, but maybe the reason why it's sort of hard to do, like, a, a another type of Call of Duty zombies without Treyarch is because it kind of was unique in its own way to begin with. I mean, when I think about other games like it, not talking strictly gameplay, but more of just thematically, like Wolfenstein and stuff comes to mind, and I don't know if there are many other games out there in that same type of like sort of occult science genre like I'm sure there's a handful but maybe at least in sort of popular memory so maybe it makes sense why it's just like if it's Call of Duty zombies it has to be Treyarch because they were sort of the ones that kind of at least in the more recent times kind of popularized that and like that's sort of what people are are expecting that Um, because yeah I don't really think of too too much I mean there's been other games that have come after it too that have followed that same but I don't know this doesn't seem like a big genre for me yeah, I guess my, I wonder, like, for, for specifically World War II zombies, you know, that was one that yeah. I actually tried to get into, uh, you know, ahead of time on that viral and stuff like that. Like, do you think it was just the gameplay just being, uh, you know, too scary to whatever for people mm-hmm. that they just, like, backed off? And so that's why it failed. Do you think the story was poorly written? Like, how do you assess that? I mean, it's per- so for me personally, oh, you go ahead. Yeah. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Because I will say, full disclosure, I never really played World War II Zombies, but I feel like that kind of factors into my answer, and that yeah. I really enjoyed the viral marketing up to it, and it mm-hmm. felt a lot like what Treyarch used to do. And I can even sort of extend some of that stuff to Infinite Warfare Zombies, like some of those elements. It just, for me, it was like, I wish those... It was like, wow, that's so cool. You know, they're, they're tying it into this or that. or And I was like, but at the end of the day, it came down to, I wish that, I wish that's what Treyarch did. So it's weird because like, that's I don't know. exactly what I'm saying, man. I almost feel yeah. like it's just a pure, just like nostalgia or not even nostalgia. Just like we, yeah. Treyarch has treated us so well. And we have just like such grand ideas and conspiracies and like headcanon, you know, yeah. over a decade about this theory, about this story. And we're just like, oh man, if we could have this in our story, that'd be sweet. We don't want yeah, it in just- a separate story. Exactly, because it's not even an insult towards them. Like, I like the idea of the, what was it, like, the Monuments Men, and, like, oh, that's how, that's sort of the, the gateway into why they're looking at these artifacts and stuff. Like, and, like, so much of that was so cool, and, and then it just, my mind goes, why couldn't Treyarch do that? That would have been perfect. So, yeah, it's, I don't know, a victim of its own success. I mean, I never really played them. I mean, I haven't heard any bad things about it, I, I think, at least for World War II zombies. I mean, from what I read, that I guess the as the DLC season went on, it started to get progressively weaker, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel bad because they there's nothing wrong with any of them, but Infinite Warfare World War II, it's like, man, 
it just makes me think, I kind of want it in Treyarch's game. You know, Mephistopheles, the Monuments Men, like, all that should just be in Treyarch. Bigfoot, giant monsters, just put it in Treyarch's game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Treyarch's yeah. always really good for, like, bl- blending these genres that should not work together. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know people, obviously, have ragged on it, because it's jumped a shark many a times. Like, the, the World yeah. War One steampunk, giant robots, <laughs> um, the dragons. But, like, I, I think it just works uh, the dragon. really well. Uh, even yeah, when it that, doesn't, um, it has a charm to it. You really, it's just like why, right? I, I guess you like, love to see it. <laughs> yeah, I think Moon was maybe like the first like prelude to jumping the shark. But now, like looking back, yeah, I feel like Origins was like wow, they really went, <laughs> they went somewhere. <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny way to put it. Thinking because it's so funny to go back and watch the 2011 COD XP, and they're just like, well, what the heck do we do now that we're on the moon? Well, okay, let's just blow up the Earth. Like, they just don't <laughs> yeah. like, well, yeah. like well, we just gotta go all the way with it. Now, alternate timelines and giant robots, it's like, you know, by the time you get to Apothecons and Dragons, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I kind of <laughs> get it now. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, I, I, there's an interview with Jason Blondell where he talked about uh, when they made Der Reese, mm-hmm. how they thought the teleporter might be jumping the shark. They were like, yeah. really, like, they didn't know if they wanted to add that. Thinking about that now, that sounds crazy. That sounds like that's so funny. Why not? It's because I remember. I mean, like Duris definitely really hit the sort of um, mad scientist okay. kind of vibe, and like there was like wow teleportation. But it, I don't know. I, I it, it was a uh, easier to acclimate to that to then like thinking you know like down the line like three four years later like a Nazi moon base and maybe it was easier to accept moon because there was already a conspiracy that's, about, you know, Nazi bases all over the place. Exactly. Like, yeah. But then that's like, why diesel... I think the teleporter, the teleporter is easy to, to handle because you've got drawings on the truck tra- chalkboard of UFOs. So yeah, you, know, you can, you can really set your own Overton window. Yeah, no, I think that's true. I think there was sort of an element or like when someone dives into the, Oh, you know, the like Foo Fighters and Nazi UFOs and die Glock. It's like, well, you know, this is where it comes from, so it's not that out of place. Mm-hmm. But giant robots in World War One—that might be a little bit. <laughs> and dragons. Okay, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. Every map owes it to to Darius for breaking the seal, I suppose. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because it's like I don't know. I mean, maybe it. It. it I guess maybe Shinonuma had more of unique assets, but because I know like Noct and Verucht were sort of like ripped just from campaign multiplayer, but. It, I don't know, to me, it just felt, Shinonuma felt more, like, vibrant and colorful than Varuk. Like, there was something more gritty and somewhat realistic about Varuk. I mean, I know we're talking about zombies, but, yeah, it just felt like once we hit that point, like, that was slowly but surely the the beginning of the end. No, Yeah, I don't know it to the teleporter, I owe it to the flogger. The first <laughs> thing that broke the shark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to transition, I guess. So the next question would be, what is your favorite map and why? Mm. Let's go. Is this a tough one? Is this a... It, 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 can I modify that? Because, like, I, I'm difficult with, like, oh, I don't really have, like, one oh, well, I get favorite. Or, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's, like, maybe, like, what's the most iconic map of, like, each game? Because I always think of, like, I don't know, I always think of uh, Duris for World at War. And maybe um, for, like, Black Ops, I'll think of either Shangri-La or Moon. Black Ops 2, I would say either Mob or Origins. Black Ops 3, I don't know, that's kind of difficult. Um, I really have to come back to Black Ops 3. Black Ops 4, I, li- I like 9. Um, and Alpha Omega, or you know what, Classified. I have a soft spot for Classified in Black Ops 4. Yeah. Um, I have to. Yeah. It just—it was interesting because, like, I don't know, maybe they felt like there was more of a flow to Black Ops Three, where I kind of just link all the maps together. Um, but I yeah, I think I think Matt is completely wrong in every way. <laughs> and yeah, here's why: I the obvious, <laughs> the obvious answer is that the best map ever is Ascension. Uh, oh, Ascension well, that is was a curveball. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's. I just spent so much time on it that it uh, just holds a holds a special place. You know, like that was such a fun map. I, I thought to do um, huge uh, trains, 
you know, you could just go forever up on the PhD yeah. platform. That was amazing. Uh, God, I was like, oh, I was killing it. And my, um, and my Xbox, I didn't realize it had the auto shutdown thing, you know, after like six hours. <laughs> and so you wake up and you're just like devastated. And you're like, I can never do that again. I'm not, I'm not even going to put the effort into it. Yeah. So that was just all the emotions in Ascension. You know, the first Easter egg, really? Or not, you yeah. know, I mean, first real one. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah that's, no. That's good map. They all sort of have, I mean, I guess, because I never really got super duper far. Maybe I think Doris when I would like train or like camp on the catwalk with, you know, my brother yeah. and cousin and stuff. I never really got super duper far into all the other maps. So like, I, I don't know. I always appreciate them maybe from like an aesthetic perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really hard for me to narrow it down, but I do like Ascension. Uh, There's just, oh my, and it's like, so it hits so many of the chords for me. Like uh, the Illuminati on the television screens. Yes, is, it is. Like, I, I just love that. Um, the fact that I think we had a lot of fun back in the day with the Easter egg, you know, it was like the Casimir mechanism and everyone's just like looking up the Casimir effect and like really trying to get into, like, you know, we're all like fucking, I mean, freaking <laughs> like 15. <astrophysicist>. Right? <laughs> right. Trying to be, trying to do all this. And it's, yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah. Ascension's great. That's, that's where I learned to actually play the game. <laughs> that you're just training on that map, and they exactly. call it that's where you cut your teeth. Yeah, it's a perfect map to teach someone to play the game. It's got everything you need, All dude. Pieces. Even oh man, and the the freaking okay. Remember or remind me? Um, obviously the zombie type that I remember Ascension for is you know the where they would like do the summer the rolling. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was cool. What's like a history of that? I think didn't. I think Hunter said that Baruch had like sprinters. Can you do you guys? Yeah, the, are there any yeah. others? Yeah, I, I was, called the I dead guess... sprinters too. But yeah, Baruch was the first. Baruch, the yeah. Baruch, I always well, remember the fighting stance zombies in. Uh, oh, Shinonuma. In Shinonuma. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I what do you want your next one to be? What do you want them to do? What's it? Uh, what's your next move? You want? Well. After we saw the concept art of, like, sort of the Vietnam, yeah. like, the, the Viet Cong martial arts song, like, I think, because I was upset Ascension didn't bring back the sort of Spetsnaz, like, I, I, swear, I swear I read somewhere I said it was, like, an X-Roll or something. I have no clue if that's the name. I just, I don't know why I remember someone saying that's what it was. But I thought that was so cool to sort of have, like, a zombie, like, it's still, you know, shambling and kind of unintelligent, but then there's, like, a part of it that still remains human, and it was fascinating to watch them do stuff like that to, like, roll or dodge out of the way. Um, so I want more stuff like that. And, and seeing the sort of the Viet Cong, like, oh, maybe they'll, they'll bring that back. I'd like to see that again. Cool. I, I just like more special types of zombies. Like, that's, like, one of the things, like, I get excited for each map. Like, ooh, is there a new sort of dog round or a new boss, mini boss, special zombie? Like, that's, I think, also what makes the map for me, the sort of different aesthetic that's tied to it um, in terms of the, like, enemy variants. I think there ought to be, if you throw down a monkey bomb, one of the zombies will start break dancing. I really think that <laughs> would be a thing. It's like an Easter egg. Yeah. yeah. Having infinite warfare zombies. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, we're not uh, that far off anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, mind control, if there's some dancing, you know, music box or, you know, that for makes sure. zombies dance. One of them de- decided to take the ethics regulations a little too far. <laughs> And uh, just made it a breakdancing zombie. I could see <laughs> it. Yeah. All right. We... So then, question for you: What is your? I didn't want to say least favorite map. That seems. I'm gonna rephrase it to: What's like your least favorite part of zombies? Ooh. I think for me, like I said, the transit crew. You know, Victus. They they hold a special place in my heart, but I just remember, like, after the cliffhanger of Moon, and this especially in the, it was still sort of Zombies was in its infancy, where they were really secretive, it was just so hard for me, because my main question was what happened to Ultimus and out on the Moon, so aside from, like, Ricktop, and so that was, like, I, I think the, the biggest part where I had the, the largest disconnect, being like, what happened to them? So I guess that period was kind of a little bit of a, a lull, um... Because it was, it was hard for me to sort of really engage. And I'm like, 
you know, trying to like find is there any hints or anything in each of the maps. Uh, that's what I would say. Right, like the moment that I saw, this isn't my answer, but the moment that I saw that they were going to spend the whole year on like a new crew, I just like checked out. I was like, <laughs> no, thank you. I'm totally not not yeah. into it. No, you know, I've come to appreciate them, like you said, over over time. Like I came to really like Marlton, and especially uh -huh. there's like a lost character that kind of is like him, so I love him even more. So like I've come to, you know, Russman got his story filled out, which was cool. Um, so I've come to like all of them, but yeah, that no, was, they, uh, yeah, they definitely hold a place in the story. Um, yeah. In their own right. Nice. Rad, what do you think? Right, yeah. I, would, it, I think it does everything to do with story. It has to do with, uh, the way the gameplay has been accelerated so much over the years. Mm -hmm. Like you go, I, I play Black Ops one, right? I can make a crawler. <laughs> and I can go do a step, right? Yeah. But but that's just they for some reason they they just don't like that, right? They just make that not an option, and it's like a single zombie is like a death sentence if it's a running <laughs> around, because they can chase you down as fast as you are in like Black Ops Four or Black Ops Three, and they hit you so fast. It's just it makes solo doing anything solo not mm. very fun. Um, and I mean it's obviously not fun in co-op to be the one that's running them around so mm -hmm. it, it's just i don't know why they decided to go that route i understand making the game faster because it can get pretty slow in the old days but but i feel like that was much. part of part of the charm too because even though i only started doing the easter eggs except from like the fly trap like i did the easter eggs much much later mm -hmm. but like it was it was part of the charm of like the older maps of blow like throwing a grenade and then making crawlers i, I don't know i i really enjoyed that and then now that it's not there it just feels like i mean obviously the entire game is not realistic but i'm like oh that's not realistic like you know where are the like, gibbed legs and arms and i want to see a crawler and, uh, i like so. the idea that zombies are like a death by paper cut kind of thing like <laughs> they're just more exactly. and more of them they're coming slowly they're not like and not a single one can just overwhelm you right that's what i like I took yeah. a little bit of time, and then it was a game of like you trying to button down your gameplay so you didn't make mistakes. It's like you made, you know, they just like waited for you to make a mistake, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, then you were probably fucked. But yeah, it was like a slow moving game. It was fun. You had to spend so many hours to get to like high rounds, so many opportunities to get into a bad situation. I feel that. I mean, the crawlers. I think they they used to bleed out too, right? Like, I well, feel they, like I remember that. In Black Ops 1, they respawn if they bleed out. But, like, they take oh, a okay. long time to bleed out. You can get yeah, pretty far yeah. away. But after that, it just went downhill. Yeah, I just... The other thing that kind of just reminded me was... I, like, really want to go around the map and just look at stuff. And it's so hard in, like, exactly. 3 and 4 to do that. And it's, it's like, so disappointing it's and so disheartening. Because it's like, oh, I want to read that piece of paper. I want to read this. It's like, no, I can't because I have, like, three zombies wind sprinting at me. And I'm like, all right, I'll just run around the whole map and hopefully, like, they'll get lost somewhere for, like, 30 seconds. If that's so much work into designing these maps, I just want to look at it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And not have to go to theater and, like, deal with the glitches of that or... Theater's Imagine always been game. buggy, yeah. yeah. As you describe it, that sounds like a, some sort of trick Blundell would do to... You know, make it so we couldn't find the site for the fact or something. I just want to look at the cool-looking building or something. I don't know. What if there's a secret yeah, like, behind this thing? Oh, I can't look. I'm getting hit five times, so I'm down. Or, like, if you're trying to listen to something. And already, like, the radios or in Chaos, right. the gramophones, like, all of it is staticky and muffled. And, and it's like, I'd really like to hear what they're saying, but I have the horde just screaming at me. And then it's like, all right, now I have to run away, and now I can't hear. It's like, yeah. There's a, that, that is sort of disappointing. Yeah, mm. I guess that's my break. <laughs> but you tech. I couldn't come up with something in the <laughs> time that you guys spoke. I tried to put it off as long as possible. Over here asking um, questions. No way. Yeah, right. How <laughs> dare he. Um, I don't... I've come to appreciate the character changes um, in their own right. So I don't know... I don't know that I would choose that. You know, and like you said, it's a beauty that it gets more outlandish and stuff. But I swear... After Origins, it was so yeah. tough for me to come back, man. 
I like I, I ditched it after Moon when it was the new, um, the new crew, and then I like okay I came back and then I, and then Origins and I was like <laughs> uh, I don't know about this, um, and then Bo3, that I mean that was fun like me and Mac and and some others would like we sp- spent so many hours making docs on what the house is and like what all these radios are you know putting everything in just or in different orders and stuff and it just burn me out eventually um like that one it just got like so out there i was not prepared to put in that the time to really think about these fractures and you know like do that whole thing um and so then bl4 came around and it was all the greatest hits again and i just was burned out by it um so that's why I want to go back and do BO4 for classified. You know, that's uh, that's mm-hmm. amazing. So I understand, you know, Alpha Omega, especially for me. I just I want all those. But I don't know. The story yeah. just they have put me on a ride horrible. for these 10 years. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because it, it sort of reminded me of like Black Ops 3. Um, I think part of the, the reason why I kind of all link it together is it just felt like overall it was as wacky as it was, there was still an attempt to return to sort of normalcy and like the, the radios. Cause it, it, black ops two in some areas felt very streamlined, like, especially with like the story elements within mm-hmm. the maps, like, um, you know, you had your overarching map story, but then there was just, you know, random letters and radios that kind of told side stories. And it just felt like everything in sort of the black ops two maps were sort of linear. Like I just like, and it was a lot of, of focus on like the Easter eggs. Like I just missed like, going around the map and finding a random radio that told you maybe, you know, something crucial, but not for, like, the the main, you know, progression of the, of the map itself. Right, About, right. like, you know, its backstory. So it was nice that, like, Black Ops 3 started to to have all that, as, as weird and crazy as it was when they were, you know. But yeah, That's then funny. there was... The... That's funny you say that. Sorry to interrupt you. Because I remember at the beginning of Black Ops 2... Black Ops 2, the moment, I think it was like right when everyone discovered that you had to do a tower, it was like all of a sudden everyone knew the rest of the Easter eggs. It was like, okay, so yeah. now we're going to go to tower, to tower, to tower, and then connect the towers. That's what and BO3 means too. Which I understand okay. the complaints with that, because it's like, I mean, the, all the maps except for the very last one were laid out. Like, we knew where they, where they were, because there was like coordinates yeah. and Shadows of Evil. That's right! That's right. We knew we had to get all the souls, so... That's interesting. Yeah. So it was kind of like in some ways the an attempt to sort of have the best of both worlds. Like I at least appreciated there were sort of other random maps. I mean, I know Transit had a bunch of stuff too, but I don't know. It just it just felt like things were more streamlined in Black Ops Two, and Black Ops Three kind of attempted to diversify that a little bit. But all right, let's do a critical retrospective. Are we just uh, glamorizing Black Ops One? Like did is there a thing to be said that Black Ops 1 basically laid it out from the beginning? Um, I guess if you want to say Rick Poffin in the spacesuit in Ascension, uh, you know, maybe told everyone we were going to moon. Um, I guess I don't totally remember. No, I mean, there really wasn't that much. For me, I, I just, World at War and Black Ops are basically sort of one and the same. I mean, there definitely was by the time oh, we yeah. got to moon. By the time we got to Moon, there definitely was a, enough of a departure, but I just really felt like Black Ops was just a continuation of World at War. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, And it felt like, you know, Black Ops 2 sort of it had its own spin on things, Black Ops 3. So I don't know, I guess when, if I'm glorifying it, it's really more of the glorifying the, the olden days, like when things mm-hmm. just were in their, uh, you know, starting to be, uh, yeah. to shape up. Um, Right. We had no expectations of what an Easter egg needed to be. We didn't have an Easter egg yet. We didn't. Yeah. I mean, for personally, I, I wasn't even like at that time. I think my understanding of the story was kind of more surface level. So there wasn't like it wasn't the madness of trying to connect all the spaghetti strings. Um, yeah. Because I mean, the fact that there was even a debate at the time on the chronology of the maps kind of shows That's like great. It's kind of all over the place, right? It's not always clear what the answer is, so it's a lot of guesswork, and yeah. Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah, you don't experience that as much anymore. I mean, obviously sometimes you do, but 
that that is like a staple for Black Ops. Is I think it was once you got yeah. past Ascension, it was Shangri La and Moon, and it's like, where yeah. are they? And, and then Black going Ops into Black Ops Two, yeah. you know, it was transit in the nineteen fifties, the nineties, the twenty twenties, and simultaneously wow. all over the place. It's like. That was rough trying to figure out. You're like finding like random CCCP logos, you know, on like crates downstairs. But then somebody else is saying you've got like, I thought somebody's like you've got like in uh, like a um, the refrigerator from the campaign or something. Yeah, so it's just like what? It was so difficult because I mean the the transit like aesthetic definitely was like 1950s Americana, but it's like well we're definitely in the future and at least Treyarch kind of played with uh, the the zombies sort of like time frame was sort of similar to where it is in campaign and multiplayer. And yeah, you said there's so many elements like the guns, the, this, the die rise, the night was it the, the poster that mentioned like 1990 or something. Right. Like that. I forgot like, about that. Yeah. In the mall. Yeah. Whatever. In the mall. And it's like some what? store established 1990. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, was... All right, so, mm-hmm. all right, so I got a question. Then I guess if you want to, Rad, how do you feel about pivoting to kind of our hopes and dreams for the future of zombies? Um. Yeah, I mean, what what's what what do what would you like to see um, in the game itself? And not only that, but like, what do you want to see for the community? Like, how, how do you want the community to come back? And how yeah. long do you think... I don't want to say how long do you think it's going to last, but, like, how... I don't know. How do you want the community to, to be once these games are, you know? Gosh, it's like five oh, questions yeah. in one. Yeah, I, I guess just future. What is what's what is the zombies in the future? How do you see yourself playing this game? I see myself in five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still playing zombies. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be playing this on my deathbed. <laughs> okay, I'm sinking with the ship. Um, I, don't know, I guess for me, if I circle it back to what I said in the beginning, like I felt like the Chaos Story and Alpha Omega and Classified were sort of a return to like what originally made zombies interesting for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope sort of, you know, like, was like also, I guess, tying in World War II zombies, like taking that type of storytelling and really trying to weave... Um, albeit, you know, exaggerated versions of what happened in history, like stuff like that, I think is what really drew me into it. And as long as they keep that, um, I think that's the, the main takeaway that I hope that we move forward. It's not completely fabricated where, you know, it's just some, you know, there, there's some weird occult basis or something in there. Like it's something that I can just research and feel like at the end of the day, I actually learned something, um, and even though, you know, it came from zombies, it's actually like, I don't know, it's sort of like, oh, I learned some interesting thing about history or whatever. So it's not like it's not wasted knowledge. So I think that and then my usual plug for uh, I think Treyarch has jumped the shark, but I still cannot believe they haven't had dinosaurs yet in the game. So I'd say <laughs> dinosaurs and Bigfoot and I don't know, Mephistopheles from Infinite Warfare, stuff like that. So oh, wait. No, that's 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 the other things I would throw in, and giant monsters. I want that. I love the hot take. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I think your first one on returning to Bo One style, um, you know, just the gameplay is what I like. You said Alpha Omega and Classified are so are just so nostalgic. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, they're just I love it, and so like, I. I I love that, yeah. But you know, I just though, have to wonder how many, how many of us are from Black Ops 1. Like, you know, like so many, like Hunter and I think um, definitely others on the site, you know, really were BO2 babies. And so it's kind of funny to think maybe not everyone wants BO1 nostalgia. That's true. Well, it's funny because I go back to like even thinking the characters in World at War. I mean, Black Ops and World at War are just the same thing for me, but... I mean, I think, like, at the least, if there's that love for sort of, like, the Ultimus Primus characters, I mean, that's sort of an extension of it, so maybe it's, like, you don't have to. Um, But I don't know, there was just something about, like, even though we had Chronicles, it was so weird for me when I played Classified. I was, like, I felt like I really did take a step back. It's, like, wow, this is the next step 
you know, it, it felt like for so long I've been missing this in the series with the wacky conversation, but still the heavy lore in the map and all the things going on. Like, it was such a nice trip. Even the intro, it felt like uh, they really nailed the, the, the theme of Ultimus and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, even if a lot of people, it's interesting, because even if there are a lot of people from Black Ops 2, they really seem to like those characters, which is kind of fascinating that they didn't really play much of them. You know what I mean? If they came in during the Black Ops 2, but yet they still have this staying power for people who aren't even really that familiar with them. Um, so, I don't know. That's what I would say. One part, whatever. You mean one part, you mean <laughs> two hours one, or two parts? No, like Sorry. one part. Like we just do one part and it is one hour long. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jesus, Tag, how many questions <laughs> you got? It's your laundry list of things. Yeah, dude. I've got a reservoir of questions. Okay. Uh, I do have a question. I forget where we left off. Yes. Wait, we asked the question about uh, the future of zombies. Mm. Matt answered, and then you answer, and then Robbie answer. Mm. I think. Well, I think I did answer, and I agreed with you, right? That I want the nostalgia, and then Matt started yeah, okay. talking again. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> all so right, it's Rad's turn. Okay. Um, just fun zombies. I'm gonna shoot the zombies. Um, no, for, for the future, I guess maybe it's heresy to say, but I really do want you know Treyarch and the community to be able to move on. And I don't mean that in the sense of you know no more zombies, right? I mean that in like because Black Ops Four, I think, was like this fantastic uh, swan song to the mm-hmm. Ether story as a whole. And just zombies in general, really, and it's kind of underrated in that in that aspect, which is unfortunate. But mm-hmm. I think now's the time. I wish chaos came now mm. with the full full attention because I think now's the time to move on to something something new, something we haven't seen before. Th- that that yeah. same Treyarch kind of you know because I feel like at this point they're starting to reuse a lot of ideas, and that's not inherently bad, but. No, I like the idea of nostalgia starts. train forever. Right, I, I yeah, nostalgia think, only goes so far. Yeah, I, and that's why I think the middle ground is kind of always where I felt like expand the universe, um, right. but not create like an entirely separate story. Like there's so many different avenues and places that we you could go with zombies and sort of the the things that are in play. That you know, ether still matters. Ultimus, Primus, all they they all still matter and they're a part of the universe, but like this is just a separate story. So I think it kind of satisfies the nostalgia part. Like you're not you didn't you didn't abandon what you loved, but you also have something completely new and it, it kind of just makes the universe more interesting when you have all these different powers at play and I don't know, ways you could go. So in a lot of ways I do agree. As much as I do like the nostalgia, I just think as long as they keep it in universe and just take maybe take it somewhere else. Um, you would be really fun. Don't fall into the Star Wars trap. Don't, you know, don't try to, don't don't ruin the past. I don't. Oh say, no, no, I don't want to say ruin, but just because the, Star Wars didn't, I didn't ruin anything. But don't <laughs> don't like take the past and twist it. Oh you no, 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 just build off of it. You know, I'm not. I'm no, that's what I'm building yeah. with that. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I just meant like a, like side stories, completely different things that you know. If you look at ether, ether as like a linear thing, you know, there's a parallel stories or different things that are going on. Like you know, I don't know Brock and Gary's adventures or something like that. Like it doesn't invalidate what happened or retcon. It's just yeah, right. well, there's probably a bound to be inevitable retcons, but like just not for you know storytelling purposes that they're intentionally trying to go back and change things. Just um, I just feel like yeah, it, was not, always it reminds me of a lot of their, you know, celebrity maps. I mean, I guess a lot of some yeah. of those kind of ended up being important, but you know, they were just part of the universe and they were related mm-hmm. in some ways, but they were just kind of you know fun maps that that you yeah. uh, that you just did. I mean, we have a literal multiverse now, so there's so many avenues exactly that you, take that you just can go somewhere else and not have it bleed over. Because I, because I, I, you know, that's the thing is that I, at least to say, you know, to make it as clear as possible, you know, I do believe that the the past is sort of sacred. So I don't want, you know, treading on holy ground. It's just, mm-hmm. 
um, you know, create a new story, new places. I don't know, introduce other things like elements and chaos or other forces and factors and things that exist in the universe and kind of throw the zombies formula into that and see where it went. Um, and I mean, also, um, in addition to that, I don't know, because I'm not a game designer, but like yeah. the gameplay itself, I think, needs to get some major overhaul. I, I'm not saying it's bad or anything, but like it's not no, something I, that works as well today, I guess. Uh, no, I, to sort of answer your question about the community stuff, I think the one thing that I would like to see, um, and I and they started to do it with, um, but what was it, um, Black Ops Four, was just more customization or things like that like like you can still have your lore based maps where okay these four characters are in this map but like all the other game modes or even just maybe like a non-canon like version of a map where i don't know you can play other characters or I don't know, who, who you know bring in like a specialist character like you know because we had all the black op models like i think it would be fun to just have that type of stuff i mean i like the idea of the the progression system ranking up. I mean, if it is even possible in some way, shape and form, if there ever is like a, you know, create your own character, I mean, not like something too in depth, but I think stuff like that, because then it makes zombies feel more like a legitimate mode. You know, it's like, Oh, here's my profile. Here are my stats. Here are my cosmetics. This is what I've unlocked. I think that's the stuff that kind of has the staying power for the community. Um, and it doesn't have to like kill the story. I mean, like Rush and all those other modes were just something com- for completely for fun. So, why not just have a really fun mode um, where you can just play as like you can finally have Woods and Mason and zombies or something. Ooh. Yeah, I would. I would like that. I think Black Ops Four had the potential to be that. Just mm-hmm. Development time got in the way. Oh yeah. And, Black yeah. Ops Four had a lot of potential, but it just got rushed. So. Right. It's, it's really? Is that? Uh, remind me, was that the is that like the first time they were on the two year cycle or something? Was it? Was Black Ops? Or why was it rushed? Black Ops, Black Ops 3? three? Yeah, Black Ops three was. That's I why it was it such was. a big wait. Um, yeah, was the, that's right. So why was four rushed? Fifteen. I think because they had to move to um, what was it? This this next Call of Duty that was coming out, and just yeah. even I mean, in turn, I mean, oh. I'm just saying there's behind the scenes stuff of like the campaign being cut and they put yeah. a lot of work into it and all that but then there was the stuff with like the whole qa things and the, and even just the initial for whatever reason i don't know the reason behind this but the fact that it was supposed to be a year of chaos and a year of ether and then all of a sudden it switched and it was like ether chaos and then we never got a sec like there was supposed to be a whole second season and when you look at the storyline for the ether maps it does feel like the first two maps were leading up to something and then we just jumped to like tag and it just feels like there was a couple like 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 a map or two that was missed in between so yeah there was just so much that got like kind of cut and i mean factions i feel like that that's like the one running gag right that factions are supposed to be a big thing in Mm -hmm. black ops 4 so in theory it had a lot of cool things but it just not that it makes it excuses that but i just hope that maybe those things are in black ops or with this next installment. Um, I was going to say, what uh, it seems as though the community may be settling on believing that the name is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Do you, uh, Cold you guys have any thoughts on that? Uh, how do you, you make a shooting game where you, you don't <laughs> shoot anybody? Well, that's why it's the Black Ops part. You know, because oh. it's black operations during the Cold War. Oh, so you do shoot people. You just don't yeah. talk about it. It's discreetly, right. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. I mean, I, started, I think everyone has made this too. It, it kind of seems like a little bit of a mouthful, um, but. Oh yeah. I don't. I don't know. I like. It's also just a safe bet. Although, it would be weird if I know. I think there was a lot of talk about. Vietnam playing a large role, so like mm-hmm. to be called Cold War and then just to focus uh, like of like in, like let's say sixty percent of it is Vietnam also feels a little weird. Like if I would think Cold War, I would think all the different conflicts and just weird things that happened within the you know sure. like sixty year span, roughly sixty years. So yeah, you don't want to yeah you don't want to isolate yourself to you know I mean like Vietnam is you know you're doing a lot of operations like we saw you know like um, 
it was just an act of time, you know, being in Cuba. I think we start out there and just doing Vietnam. But like, I, I think it would be, I'm glad they're doing theoretically Cold War over Vietnam. I think that would just be too, uh, you, then you just have to, your whole story has to be about Vietnam then. I mean, you know, you can't, it can't be about the Cold War. It's about Vietnam. Yeah, so that's why it's like I like I'd be okay if it was just like Call of Duty Vietnam. It's just I hope that you could you'd have room for a Vietnam game and then just sort of a miscellaneous Cold War adventures game. But I don't know. I mean, it's so strange because I feel like by now we'd at least have some teaser or some bit of information on what's going on. But who you know really would, knows? You know what I would really like though. That I don't think they will do is what? to change it from the because now Call of Duties are like. Like ever since, like uh, I guess, Modern Warfare, it's like you focus on one group of individuals just throughout a single war or a single conflict. Mm. I would really like it to be like the World at War, where it's like the, the different multiple kids, different yeah. wars. Yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I would like that because there's so there's so much time and so many wars, like little little wars along the way. Well, it's like, kind of I would funny. I want to see different characters, kind of like that. Because I know people like I mean, yeah, they had the future fatigue too, but kind of what led up to the. Oh, we're tired of world, you know, World War Two um, was the fact that there was so much in world, like there was what, you know, by the time Call of Duty Four, so excluding Call of Duty Four, by the time we got to World at War, I mean, there was like three installments of uh, Call of Duty that were just about World, um, you know, World War Two, yeah. and it followed all the different campaigns and places. So, yeah, there's there is so much you could do, um, and I did enjoy that about. Uh, about world at war i mean i think at least black ops sort of had it where in, even though you were following the same characters there was a lot of different conflicts around the globe and even just in the loading screens referencing different historical events that coincide like i just thought that was also really cool too like you know the space race and this and that so um yeah there there is a lot they could do i guess i don't know maybe they're just worried about fatigue again um yeah, that's why I think if, if they did variety, it wouldn't it wouldn't yeah. be as much chance of fatigue because it's like oh here's a here's a part in like Afghanistan, here's a part in um well that's true yeah like if Korea. you take it from, gotcha 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 yeah if you yeah. take it from the Cold War perspective but yeah like a, right and you could tell different stories with different characters in each of those that's why it'd be I feel like more no, interesting. Uh, yeah no that would definitely be really fun and interesting and it's kind of funny that like the uh, you know I can't remember how much of the campaign was the the you know. The, the Eastern Front in World at War, but it's like that's what people remember. Like people remember Reznov, but like there was a whole you know Marine yeah, the Recon camp. Yeah, yeah. But like, and it's funny that those characters. I mean, I guess they're referenced. Um, yeah, like robot. I think yeah, but like it's kind of funny that um that's that Reznov, man. It's a. Uh... I think because of the ending, yeah. That like the I just always remember the ending to World at War. I, I'm like, I like even... yeah. To your point about um, the, you know, that, that name seeming long, I thought that recent thought recently on Warzone because its real name is Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone. <laughs> huh. um, and so this yeah. is like, they're almost like getting it long enough to where you strip out the Call of Duty part. Yes. And so it's like we got Black Ops Cold, Cold War. And modern warfare war zone, like it's it's know. almost interesting. They're making it so long now. No, that is that is true. Because yeah, because I mean, so many times you've referred to it as just Black Ops or Modern Warfare. That, right. And people know what you're talking about. So. Um, yeah. Right. So we'll I see. I guess. Yeah. Hey, how do you feel about? I guess you talked about I, on on just it being Cold War. Is that like too on the nose with Black Ops One? Is that? <laughs> it's Call of Duty World War Two. Right, that that title always gets me. I don't know. Something with Battlefield V <laughs> or Battlefield One. <laughs> Battlefield this, One, not the first one, the second one. <laughs> so what about World War One? That's strange. Yeah, I don't know. T- titles are weird, man. I don't know who comes up with these. What a what businessman comes up with these? I mean, they 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 get the point across, I suppose. So, dude, the worst one. Was Infinite Warfare by Infinity, Infinity. War? That <laughs> just killed me. In- infinitely. Modern, advanced, infinite. <laughs> they were back Black to Black Ops. Yep. And at least Black Ops is original. Yeah. Which Modern Warfare are you playing? The, the old one or the new one? <laughs> right. 
And then somebody, somebody in the CODs chat, they were like, they're like, yo, how do you like Modern Warfare Remastered? And I'm like, no, that's the name of the oh, yeah. COD 4 Remastered that came out with you know, Warfare. So they dr- like, you literally just have to do like Modern Warfare 2020. Like, I, yeah, just go uh, by the year. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, there's so much. Just the title. So, all right, so we have not. We have, we thought we got a viral. But we did. Um, or possibly and, didn't. Right. To this moment, we have not gotten it. Um, the, at the end of the, I think it was the May, the May 18th patch notes for Warzone, or Modern Warfare generally, you know, there was the section at the bottom that said, you know, uh, number station, redacted, whatever, um, protocol yellow all that fun stuff and so some people you know number station just sounds black opsy you know what are the numbers facing and the protocol yellow some people had made the connection to this these internet codes in the uk from the 70s so people you know were just getting these cold war um cold war type vibes from it but it seems like it at the moment, is all self-contained um, inside Warzone, and you know that holy streg. So, yeah. seems like that's on hold for a moment. Those hopes and dreams. So, I mean, did what? What implications would it have had? I guess if it were a teaser, like what? I don't. I didn't really look into much what, what the content was of the uh, the, te- the teaser. But like, what? Uh, how could it have related to Black Ops? I suppose it read number station redacted is protocol yellow. Activate redacted system. Uh, period. Redacted is inbound, awaiting correct authorization. So, what implication it could have had is, I. So, for example, have you seen that people are spreading around? The redacted portions as as this being supposedly a quote from Black Ops One. Yeah. Um, has, has there been any been any like findings on that? I posed it to the CODs chat, uh, and a few people said they could not uh, verify that they'd ever see like nobody had ever seen that. And then I tried to Google it without. I did like on the Google search like minus right. Warzone, so I didn't get any of that. And it just, like, literally nothing came up. So I kind of think that's fake. Um, Probably. That, that's it, a... it sounds like something that would appear. So I, I guess I could see... Yeah, yeah, like, it sounds like something you'd see in, like, a, one of the intels. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I... Yeah, I could see it being real, but it... So anyway, so what the connection is, you know, who knows? Like, some people thought the first one where it says, like, number station redacted is protocol yellow. The Black Ops 1 quote people are circulating has that as uh oh, what is it Rizalka? that's the name yeah um that number station right yeah so that's you know there's connections there if it's you know all these things are true and wherever they wanted to draw it um but i don't know i think anything in modern warfare that would be considered a clue towards black ops would be on the same level of seriousness as the Nuketown references to Infinite Warfare. I think that's right. what it was. Wasn't it just like a... Uh, I think it was just like an image of like a character from the game. And like maybe it had like a transmission incoming or something. I don't remember. Yeah, that I, forget. I forget. It might. I In my fantasies, it might even be like a ship that comes on the map, but that might not be true. I don't know. There was that. Uh, right. There was that rocket. You might be thinking of that. I don't know. No, I don't know. Um, but uh, but yeah. So we we did not get uh, get the viral we were we were hoping for. Matt, did you at all look into the into the viral? Um, I mean, I think the initial part of it uh, was sort of there yeah. for. I mean, as far as I heard the. Last I checked, the bunkers were sort of opened and were sort of on the, the you know, the, the computer step. Um, and then I kind of stopped following it after that. But I'm imagining, like, since I didn't hear anything from chatter from anywhere else, I'm like, oh, okay, right. we're, we're, we're all right. 
Yeah. Uh, so that reminds me, actually, that you said that. So there was a debate going around on on the Easter egg itself where – so the step is basically you call a – or you pick up a phone, get a code, uh, like mm. a Morse code. Um, it'll be like 235 or something, and then the 2 is, you know, military or something, 3 is hospital, 5 is, you know, whatever. Um, oh. And – so then you have to go to that location and pick up the phone in that order, and then you can go open the bunker. So, right, they're at the point now where there's another bunker inside the bunker that can't be opened. Um, the bunker. Yeah, that's bunker. exactly. It's like a bunker on the other side out, I guess. Uh, and so the thing that people are trying to figure out was that got solved pretty quickly. And then on the, on the 19th, they sent out a notification that something was going to happen on the 21st. Um, and then the intel came out on the 21st, and it basically just led people to this bunker. And so people started wondering whether or not they thought they would, like, solve it in, like, a day instead of, like, four days or something, you know, like, this mm-hmm. this part of the Easter egg. And so they thought, okay, cool, release, we'll release this on the 21st, and then people will figure out how to get into the bunker, or, like, they'll mm-hmm. start caring about that bunker. But... I want I want to get your guys' opinion on misjudging it that badly, like like misjudging an Easter egg experience and how fast somebody could do it like that badly. Do you are we too jaded by Treyarch doing it so well, or do you think that's like really possible that they mistimed it so bad? I, I to me, I I mean again, this is sort of an outsider because uh, I haven't played the map, I'm not uh, or or the game entirely, but it sounds like that maybe they're adding things in stages, like maybe week by week. I mean, I don't know when the yeah. game goes into maintenance. Um, I would expect maybe the next time that there's sort of your standard maintenance for the for the map that maybe something else will be added. Like, I don't see it as it's over yet. Um, and it, But it's so hard, because, I mean, even within Zombies, the Zombies experience, I mean, you've had Easter eggs, like, because of whether leaks or just that they're, you know, for whatever reason they were solved within, like, in a day and then you've had right. some that like what was it like revelations that went on for like the longest time so it's such a toss-up um i feel like it's definitely not over and yeah let me um, rephrase i don't think it's over i guess just do you think yeah. they do you think they expected people to have it discovered on the 18th or the like the mm. the 21st like do you think that because i don't know people are like okay either this intel they released um yeah. is in cat like recapping everything we already know or they uh, or they didn't think we would know it by now. Um, like, or what if it's it's been in the game for a while now, and they're like, oh, hey, people notice that. I don't know. Yeah, right, right. So it it does seem like there's a second part coming. Um, so the first part announced that Captain Price and then a couple weapons I think are going to be showing up in season four. Mm-hmm. Um, the big rumor is it's going to be a new map that that's coming. But interesting. Um, what is the likelihood call. that it's simultaneously something related to teasing the next call of duty game but also like right. warzone is is that too much cross contamination because the only thing is like oh. just when i read number stations like yeah. I, i'm not familiar with the reboot but because i thought you know I, I heard gulag and i thought oh maybe it's like some post-soviet place but it's but it sounds like the map isn't and there's not i don't know much lore behind the map but so with that being said like when i hear number stations i think black ops like that's like two on the nose um right so but, in the game, if when you open the bunker or like when you're looking at the code uh, mm-hmm. on the bunker door, it says enter number stations code. Um, oh, okay. So unfortunately, it seems like it might just mean this bunker because um, there's like so a whole computer weird. system inside of it and like a nuke and all that stuff. That's interesting. But like, I also feel like, you know, it's Call of Duty and they know number stations. Is, it, it's yeah. It's literally Black Ops, you know, the, the meme yep. of, like, what do the numbers mean? That It's just interesting that right. like, they still kind of went with it as kind of their... their I even got, like, That's an email. That's bold of Infinity yeah. Ward to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I even had, like, an email, I guess, from Activision or whatever, or Call of Duty, and it had that, like, you know, number station. Yep. Like, you just keep... The first thing I read is number station, so who knows? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't well, know. I mean, I, it's definitely interesting. I, I personally think just because Warzone is, like... It's now independent from Modern Warfare, pretty much. You since it's free to play, right. I feel like they can start integrating stuff from whatever their title is if they want to. Mm. I mean, they tested yeah. the waters with the price and blackout. 
Um, so I, muddying the waters, not right. really an issue anymore, I suppose. Well, like, w- what's weird for me is that they mu- the, the, the waters are muddied, but it's still, I guess, somewhat clear enough that, oh, this is Infinity Ward and this is Treyarch. Like, I, you know, like Call of Duty Mobile had the, it's just the, the amalgamation of everything. Like, I'm just sort of waiting for that to be the, um, the, the like, when I, when I see that Warzone, Blackout, whatever, Battle Royale map, then I'm like, okay, that's just going to have everything. Like, it would still feel a little weird to then have, and I don't know, maybe the people sort of who are really attached to Modern Warfare, like, how, how would you feel if then Warzone started to become, like, you know, there's a whole season of just Treyarch stuff? Like, would that be weird? Because I, to me, I still associate it with modern warfare. Right. Well, that's you know, it's you have to associate it. It's the whole f- yeah. game mechanics and physics. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Same as I don't. Too. I don't know how they're going to deal with exactly. I don't. Same map as all you know, the ground war maps yeah. and all that. I don't get how they're going to manage how Treyarch is going to manage having a successful blackout in Black Ops. You know, four and that's why I don't think they too. Just for that. Yeah. I almost think they're just going to skip it because because Warzone came out in like March. So if you give Blackout like a fifteen month you know uh, mm-hmm. time period, and then you give Warzone like fifteen months, at that point, like there can't be another Blackout during that game cycle. Well, it also feels like I mean I'm not a developer, but it kind of feels like a waste of resources, like to put so much time and effort into a battle royale, a huge map, you know, like hundred players or whatever, and all these different skins and everything, and then it's like it's done in a year, like. Right. Like that's something that's sort of built with longevity. So like I almost just feel like just just have your your amalgamation Call of Duty like kind of like not exactly like mobile, but at least thematically like mobile. Like that be your ba- Call of Duty Battle Royale and let's just let's have that cuz it just seems right. it's like also hard to get invested cuz like Warzone seems really fun and cool, but I'm like, "Oh, it's, it's going to be dead." And like even like I, I kind of would want to yeah. go back and play Blackout and like get some of the Blackout skins, and especially mm-hmm. because I'm on PC, but like I feel like that's that's just probably like on its last life, you know. Right. Like, is that's anyone playing thing. Blackout? Um. Yeah, I did. there there is a dedicated crowd that plays okay, one of the Blackout okay. modes. Um, but that's what I thought was so ingenious about the way that Infinity War did the Warzone map, because yeah. all you know, all of it's just they built that map from the ground up, and mm-hmm. then they sectioned little portions off to be ground war maps. Um, uh, and like multiplayer maps, and like they really just did one map and then portioned it out for the game. You know, but I mean, there's some multiplayer maps that are separate, but um, no, that makes sense. But I thought that was, you know, compared to Blackout, which yeah. was just its own entire beast, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think they're so, sort of heading into the direction of maybe like having just a standard standalone, like maybe eventually one day that'll even be what Zombies will be, its own standalone thing. But, um, you know, maybe. I feel like, because I feel like they're not going to do a, a battle royale a third time and then just have it be like a, a temporary thing. But it does at least make sense that, you know, for the modern warfare perspective, if it is the multiplayer maps, it's much smarter and uh, better right. use of, I guess, your assets and resources where at the very least, like if you do have to dump it in a year and a half, there's no love lost because it's like, you know, right. these were built for the multiplayer. You know, it's not like we spent all this time you know, remastering buried exactly. <laughs> to just have it. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Final, final thing before we transition away. Did mm-hmm. you guys see Noah J's crazy donation um, stream a few days ago by chance? No. no. What What happened? Was it crazy? It was. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Okay. It was the twenty first. So it was the day like of whatever the supposed um call of duty event was going to happen you know mm-hmm. it was that that day and so him and him and a few others were uh were streaming and out of nowhere he got he just started getting like every minute every 30 seconds to a minute he was getting a hundred dollar donations um just out of nowhere uh and so he's just like man this like must be a glitch or something but that went on for hours and he ended up getting he like nineteen thousand <laughs> he got nineteen thousand dollars in donations in like the span of a couple hours for like not even doing anything. They didn't do anything with the Easter egg because there was nothing to solve. Uh so it was like it was just random. He just got twenty thousand 
dollars in donations. Maybe it's from just... Activision. <laughs> yeah, Reading into it. this, is this uh yeah, is this uh is this a part of the Easter egg? <laughs> like look into the donations, what numbers are in the donations. It was crazy, man. His stream was almost unwatchable because you know how they have like the uh whenever you subscribe or donate, they throw out like graphics and sounds. Like it it took over the stream. His entire like his software started bugging out. It was so funny. It was just he started like ugly crying on stream. You know, we love you, but I had to bring it up, sorry. Uh, I, I was, just want to believe it it's a meta part of the Easter egg. <laughs> that <laughs> would be where, crazy. That's, that's where I'm going. Some go. real viral marketing. I don't know, that's, that's crazy, though. Good for him, but yeah, it's funny. All right, take it away, Dad. Dad? I'm not your dad. Sorry, Rad. Rad Dad. <laughs> I'm not your dad. I don't tell you what to do. Um, <laughs> Good try. Oh, <laughs> well, guys. Uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time. So, peace out. Bye. Bye.